It's time for another fan episode. Let's find out what they think to the start of the Spurs season. You are Locked On Spurs, your daily San Antonio Spurs podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to Locked On Spurs and the Locked On NBA Network. I'm your host, Jeff Garcia, Spurs writer for Kins 5 San Antonio. Happy Friday, everybody. Uh, your Spurs, uh, not too shabby of a start for a team that's supposed to be in tank mode. And it's time to find out what our fans are thinking about the start of the season after five games. So that's exactly what we're going to do with the fan episode here. What are the fans thinking about this hot start? And what about Team Tank? Yeah, one of the captains of Team Tank is going to come on this show. And then later on the show, we're going to have um, the return, his weekly visit, Dr. Ryan McCorkle. He will be back to talk about Primo's butt injury. Yeah, that's right. Vassell's knee injury and much more. Who is repping the fan base today? He is back, everybody. Zach Escamilla. Zach, welcome back to Locked On Spurs. I, you know, is the uh, tank ship have a lot of holes in it right now? Uh, it's got a couple of holes, but nothing that can't be repaired. <laughs> well, we're going to talk about that in, in a little bit. But if you, Zach, if you remove your tank, your captain tank hat right now, and just look at the team as just a, you know, a unbiased fan, you know, no team tank, no team compete, whatever. Uh, just get with your thoughts first. How do you think this start to the season is for this young team? Um, Jeff, I got to tell you, I, I really love what I've seen out of Devin Vassell and Keldon Johnson. I know Keldon's averaging about 20. Um, Devin's averaging yeah. in the high teens. And whether you're team tank or team win every game at all costs, you have to yeah. love what you're seeing out of those two guys. And I think some of the things you've seen from Trey Jones, there's a lot of positive development because this season is about developing some of these young guys, seeing who's going to be part of the equation uh, mm -hmm. for the future. So I'm very happy with what I've seen from some of the individual efforts. And I mean, yeah, they're, they're three and two, but it's early. Uh, there's still plenty of time, <laughs> plenty of season left. But uh, as of now, there are a lot of things I've seen that that do make me happy and optimistic as a Spurs fan. Yeah, exactly. And and I think Spurs fans that just if they remove their team tank or team compete hat and just see this five game start, it's not too shabby. You know, you got they're starting a 19 year old guy, Sohan who in the last two games looks like he's slowly starting to turn the corner a little bit. Hopefully it continues and getting more offensive minded versus defensive minded. You mentioned the play of Trey Jones. You know, I found this stat pretty interesting, Zach. He leads, well not leads, but he's among the leaders in the NBA in loose ball recovery. So he's diving on the floor. He's going after it. So you got that contribution. His sister up you got guys like Jay rich, Josh Richardson, Jakob Pertl still being that steady for his double-double. So, all in all, not a bad start. But what are the fans saying about this hot start to the Spurs season? Are they loving it? Were they liking it? Uh, are they shocked? Are they surprised? So, just collectively, what are the fans saying? I think everyone is shocked. Even the people that were anti-tanking and, you know, believe, you know, tanking is for losers sort of thing. I don't yeah. think there's anybody that said, oh, the Spurs are going to be you know, three and two after five games and heck maybe even four and one had Devin Vassell and Primo played last night. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they were very competitive in that Minnesota game when Minnesota was on fire from three point land. I mean, they yeah. weren't missing for a minute. So the fact that they were competitive in that game, that just shows this team is, you know, on the up and up. So for me, I think you look at it as a whole, most fans are probably shocked. You're probably having the team anti-tank folks saying, oh, look at you, mm -hmm. anti-tankers, yep. you're in shambles, oh my gosh. And then you got you know, the team tank folks saying, well, still a lot of season left. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, have they really played anybody outside of maybe Philadelphia that was like legitimately a shocker? I mean, yeah, Minnesota's got some size with Gobert and um, – in, in towns but other than that i don't know if they really have that killer instinct quite yet uh, you know the warriors and the milwaukee bucks and start beating the likes of them 
then you're going to have another conversation about, oh, my gosh, are these right. guys, you know, dark horse contenders? Not saying yeah. they are. Yeah. I'm just saying for me to jump off the team tank boat, I would need to see those type of wins. I mean, right now we're five games in, Jeff. I think everybody needs to just take a chill pill and wait till maybe the 25 game mark to see where this team is. We're talking with Zach Escamilla on this fan episode of Locked On Spurs. And we thank you for making Locked On Spurs your first listen each and every day. Just a reminder, we are free and available wherever you get podcasts. Uh, Zach, I, I like this start to the team. Look, I, I've been on Team Tank. I pretty much said it on Locked On Spurs plenty of times. But remind me again, isn't part of the agenda this season also development? So then collectively, all fans should be together in that front, shouldn't they? Absolutely. I mean, you want to see guys play well. I mean, especially if even if you are a team tank, you don't want to see your guys miss every single shot. Like no one is going out there hoping that Keldon Johnson or Devin Vassell shoot 0 for 20. No, nobody is hoping for that. I mean, in my mm-hmm. opinion, and this is just me, Jeff, I would love to see Keldon uh, Vassell and, and Trey Jones and Sohan you know, hit a hundred percent of their shots, but compete in the game and, and, and get the L um, because I'm sorry. I think if you put a Victor Wembanyama next to those guys, you're looking at a top four team. If you get Victor Wembanyama with these cats, the way they're playing right mm-hmm. now, I mean, dang, that wouldn't that be something like to actually yeah, be in the playoffs again and actually be competing, not for the play-in. I'm talking be one, one of the top four seeds. You know, making it Mm -hmm. past round one, making it interesting. That's what I want to see again. Yeah, I mean, there's so many things that you want to see from this team as the season moves on. I'm going to be really interested to see how this young team handles a losing streak. You know, it's coming. It's coming. You know, right now, as our our last guest on Lockdown Spurs said yesterday, he said it's, it's stranger things right now. We're in the upside down world. It's Utah four and one. Lakers 0 and 5, Spurs 3 and 2, three game win streak. Uh, you know, you and I mentioned you got Utah who's supposed to be tanking, OKC beating top teams to start the season. Everything's upside down, topsy turvy. But you and I have been watching and following the NBA for years. And normally, this isn't just how normal seasons start. It's usually upside down, but when the dust settles, the cream of the crop rises. Absolutely. I definitely do believe that. Didn't uh, Randy Macho Man Savage say that? The cream always rises to the top. Yep, um, it does. Yeah, it's early. It's five games in. And with all the trade rumors out there with Josh Richardson, um, you know, I know Doug McDermott has been out there in the offseason, and, and Yaka Pirtle has been another, another name out there uh, as trade bait. Um it's just going to be really interesting to see what this team looks like in the coming months. You know, some of these players, are they going to be available? You know, last night, that Timberwolves game, Jeff, Mm -hmm. with, uh, with Devin Vassell and Josh Primo being out, I think that would have been a golden opportunity to see Blake Wesley and Branham play. Uh, Maybe even Don Barlow, just because, I mean, why not? You know, let, let's see sure. what these guys have. So uh, that was a little disappointing, but I, I'm just very curious to see, you know, what this roster looks like in the next mm-hmm. couple of months, you know, okay. especially yeah. up to the trade deadline. You know, who's going to be here? Um, who's going to be in the G League? Who's going to be playing in the NBA? Yeah. Yeah, it's, gonna, it's definitely interesting. But you know, look, regardless, whatever team you're on, uh, tank or not tank, you got to be loving this start to the season. And I'm glad you mentioned that last Minnesota game because, yeah, no Primo, no Vassell, and this team remained competitive. They erased that 17-point 17, 17 lead Minnesota had, okay? And that's them at full power. The Spurs were at full power, and they built up a 35-point lead on that team. So as Jay Rich said after the game, Zach, he said that he met a cat at midcourt after the game and reminded him that this team and his team plays again uh, this uh, in just a few short days. And Jay Rich also put it out there, said that it would have been a different story if Vassell and Primo had played. So I like that confidence out of him. I, I, I think that's going to be really good for this young team moving forward. They, they got a big test tonight versus Chicago. 
we'll see how this team responds to a loss. But the good news is they're going back home. Once again, you we are talking with Zach Escamilla on this fan episode of Lockdown Spurs. When we get back, I'm asking him a big question. Since he is one of the captains of Team Tank, is his life in shambles right now? Is is the tank needing repairs, oil, a new tread on the tires, on the or tread on the the wheels there? We're gonna ask him that and a lot more in this fan episode of Lockdown Spurs. But before we do that, I want to talk to you about Price Picks. Look, Price Pick is a daily fantasy app you got to get right now. How does it work? So you pick two to five players, and if they score more or less than the Price Pick projection, you win ten times your money on any entry. Simple, easy. No competing against other people. It's just you versus the projections available. Price Picks offer projections on any sport you watch, including NBA, NFL, MLB, NHL, PGA, college football, men's college basketball, women's college basketball, esports, and get this, Zach, listen up. This is a, they even got disc golf. Disc golf. Have you ever heard of disc golf? I have. I've never participated, but I've heard it's a lot. I've never of fun. heard of that. Yeah, it sounds fun. Uh, then we got cricket and Euro basket. So they got it all there at Price Picks. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's that easy. Safe and fast withdrawals. Currently operational in over 30 states and Canada. Download the Price Picks app or go to pricepicks.com right now to sign up to play daily fantasy sports. First time users, you get 100% instant rebate or well, instant deposit, excuse me, match on up to 100 bucks with promo code locked on. Basically, you deposit 100, price pick gives you 100. You give them 50, price picks will give you 50. Simple as that. Don't forget to enter promo code locked on at sign up for an instant deposit match up to $100. We're back with Zach Eskami on this fan episode of Locked On Spurs. And later on in the show, we're going to bring in Dr. Ryan McCorkle. He's back for his weekly visit. He's going to talk about the recent injuries that popped up with this young Spurs team. Zach, he's also going to address the Kawhi Leonard thing, too, the injury. I just love so his that's name, going to be interesting. McCorkle. That is such a fun name. <laughs> that's a do- And I don't know if you heard his segments, but uh, he's so doctor. And like when we set up these meetings, he gets hyped. Because he likes to, he wants to educate Spurs fans on the medical side of things, and he gets a, a big, uh, big high off that. He loves just teaching. So, so, so uh, is Doc going to come out and uh, say that the the injuries to to Primo and Vassell are are pop being Team Tank? I'm glad you mentioned that. I'm going to remind. I'm going to ask him that when he comes on in a bit. So thank you for uh, bringing that up. I'm going to be Doctor. It was your diagnosis Team Tank with these injuries? <laughs> what? Yeah. Stay tuned for that. Uh, but we're not done talking with Zach. He has one more segment right here on Locked On Spurs. Zach, you are, you put it out there. You're one of the captains of Team Tank. You've been asking for this for years. It's finally here, a season where the team can really tank. All signs, preseason, offseason, we're pointing to that. Brian Wright comes out and does an interview with Sirius XM NBA Radio, all but says we're tanking. But that hasn't been the situation so far. They went on a three-game win streak. The Spurs won all those three in the road. They beat the likes of the Philadelphia 76ers in their gym. What is the status of Team Tank right now, Zach? How are y'all doing? I think we're doing just fine because I know it was only game one of the season, but to get beat down by the Charlotte Hornets and the way that they got beat down, wearing those cool, classy classic oh yeah the jerseys yeah. that paid homage to the likes of george iceman gervin and james silas uh, a little disappointing that that was one of your l's you know to open the season losing to a team that was not at full strength and to really get embarrassed um i truly expect um more performances like that i don't want mm-hmm. more performances like that but i expect there to be some nights where we just see that type of bad play it's a young team uh i think again as i mentioned in the previous segment in a perfect world i would love to see guys like the cell jones sohan and Keldon johnson have amazing games have mm-hmm. amazing games compete don't get blown out but compete and then maybe lose some heartbreakers because it just it's going to show us that there is some talent on the team we just need someone like Victor to really get us over the hump. And I'm sorry, I'm just not interested in seeing a play-in team. 
I'm not interested in seeing a team that's the eighth seed. That's not what I want. I want to see a team that is competing for conference championships and for NBA championships. And as nice as it has been to see them pull off some upsets here, I just do not believe not. And if, if listen, if they prove me wrong, Jeff, and we're sitting here after a quarter of the season and they they're a top three, top four seed, then, you know, maybe it'll be time to jump off the tank ship. But right now it's five games in. They had that one ugly loss to Charlotte. Everybody needs to, again, take a chill pill. Let's just wait and see. You know, you know I get it. Maybe things will normalize as the season moves on and, you know, the Spurs kind of come down to earth. But you know, as one of our guests has said in the past, Michael Jimenez, San Antonio Sports Star, he said that isn't this the same Spurs team that was supposed to be bad last season? They go out and beat the Bucks at that time, the champs in their gym to start the season, and then everything came crashing down. Do you expect that to happen again? Where they go out and beat the champs and then kind of take a nosedive? Yeah. I mean, maybe. <laughs> I guess I, I'm almost looking at this team and thinking, oh my gosh, was DeJounte Murray the problem? <laughs> <laughs> you wow. know, w- w- yeah. was his was his you know him being the uh, you know the primary ball handler um, you know was he being too much of a ball hog that caused this team to not get to their full potential or is it just Kelvin Johnson and Devin Vassell took massive leaps? I think I joked with you on an earlier LO, uh, locked on Spurs. Uh, months back in the off season, I said, I don't expect this Spurs team to make the playoffs unless Keldon and, and Devin end up becoming, you know, Michael Jordan and Scotty Pippen light. <laughs> and I'm not saying they have <laughs> become that, but gosh, the way they've been playing recently. And then you got Jeremy Sohan doing his best Dennis Rodman impression. Yeah. Uh, you got Trey Jones doing his best uh, Ron Harper impression. And, you know, you got Jakob. He just has to be Luke Longley from that 96 Bulls team. I don't think that's asking much. I'm just saying, <laughs> on paper, the way they're playing right now, it doesn't look too bad. So who knows, Jeff? Maybe they come out and shock the world. I mean, I'm not going to sit here if the Spurs are a four seed after 50 games and, and they're competing. I'll, I'll gladly be off that team tank bus or ship, whatever you want to call it. No, I just think, again, Jeff, we are in a situation where it's so early in the season, not to sound like that broken record, but there's so much basketball left to be played. Um, the Spurs could go in and upset the Warriors or someone like that. They could, they're could. they probably going to have some more games in them mm-hmm. where they win against teams that we're going to sit here and think, my gosh, is this team for real? But then they're going to also have games like they had against Charlotte where they're going to lose against a really bad team. And you're going to think, huh? Like, how did you beat the Warriors? But you lost to the Lakers, especially the way the Lakers are playing recently. Yeah, Um, exactly. You know, I wonder if uh, the Russell Westbrook to the Spurs rumors are going to start dying off now. I don't know. The Vegas has the Spurs of the third best odds at getting him. And the Athletic reported that the Spurs and Lakers had preliminary talks. So maybe something's clicking. Don't know. But I, if the Spurs want to tank, just bring in Westbrook. Just, hey, shoot the ball, Russ. Go ahead. Have fun. Shoot it. Let, tell Russ <laughs> to shoot it from, from three every possession. You know, just Yeah, every possession. Take, t- yeah. take, take so, as many threes as possible. He'll be, he'll be the true tank commander. <laughs> well, I'm glad you brought up the tank thing. So in summation, what is the state of Team Tank right now before we let you go? I, I think – for, for me, Team Tank, we're just in wait-and-see mode. You know, we're, we're still on that ship because, I'm sorry, as great as some of these wins have been, I just don't trust this team to sustain this type of luck. Um, I, I mean, again, I, I still expect them to play their hearts out. I expect them to compete. But you got to wonder, Jeff, do some of these teams, they see the Spurs on their calendar and they automatically assume, oh, look at this roster. <laughs> this is going to be a W. Do we really even need to scout them? But I think now that early in the season they have some wins, I think you're going to have more teams 
when they scout them before the game, they're going to start taking them a little bit more seriously now. And I think the Spurs are going to have a little bit more of a target on their back, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Teams aren't going to be expecting um, a sad team to just come in and roll over. Um, They're going to be expecting (laughs) a fight, and I think they're going to prepare accordingly. There you go. He is Zach Escamilla on this uh, fan episode, at least a couple segments of Locked On Spurs. Zach, as always, we thank you for repping the fan base, uh, giving your thoughts, the fan base's thought, Team Tank's thought. We're going to have to balance it out. I think I'm going to have to bring in somebody who's not Team Tank and see what they have to say. They may take shots at you, Zach, so be ready. Uh, that's okay. I'm I'm used to it. I'm married. Um... <laughs> what, a, what, a, what a way to let Zach go. Uh, again, uh, thank you, Zach, for hopping on uh, for a couple segments here at Lockdown Spurs. But when we get back, we're going to bring in Dr. Ryan McCorkle. He's going to give us uh, his uh, thoughts on the recent injuries to Vassell and Primo in his weekly visit right here on Lockdown Spurs. But before we do that, hey, thanks for making Lockdown Spurs your first listen today. For your second listen, check out Lockdown Sports today. From the games that matter to the most, oh, the biggest stories in sports, go beyond the scoreboard with behind the scenes and local experts and insights only Locked On can provide. Locked On Sports Today, available on this app, YouTube, and wherever you get podcasts. All right, we are back with Dr. Ryan McCorkle. Yes, the doctor is back making his weekly visit right here on Locked On Spurs to catch you up on, uh, we're more educating you on the injuries that the Spurs sustain and much, much more. Make sure to follow him on Twitter at Austin E.R. Doc. Do it right now. He's a great follow. Got questions? He'll answer them. Dr. Ryan, welcome back to Lockdown Spurs. Great to talk to you again this week, Jeff. Thanks for having me. Not a problem. Uh, And by the way, everybody, he is an E.R. Doc at St. David's Medical Center and at the Austin Emergency Center. He also is with the Backstage Medical and Concierge Medicine Practice. He's going to tell you more about that later on in the show. So, Doctor, I heard you you um, you still got some hops in you. Oh, uh, the hops are gone. That's the first thing to go. <laughs> the explosiveness, right? I, but right. you know, you get smarter, so you can still you can still play, and you're uh, you're a lot smarter with what you do. But boy, the the hops and the uh, the uh, the bounce is the first thing to go. Yeah, I, I I can't remember the last time I played basketball, and I think you and I are about the same age. And I can only imagine if I get back on that court, whether it be at the gym or just outside, I, I think I'd be, I'd be suffering. But I remember my good yeah. days. I remember I used to have good days back. That's what day. it is. It's like golf, right? You, you still have just yeah. enough good days that keep that keep you coming back. But, uh, I, I'd give my I give my uh, my pickup squad at least two good moments. After that, I'm calling timeout because my lungs are probably burning. They're they're just on fire. Right. <laughs> All right, doctor, let's get into it. Uh, the Spurs uh, do have a couple injuries. Again, keep in mind, everybody, this is recorded before tonight's Bulls game, so maybe that could change. But at least heading into the Bulls game, the uh, Spurs reported two players with some injuries. Uh, Devin Vassell with left knee soreness. And Josh Primo, his butt is hurt. No, we're not making that up. That's literally what, <laughs> what the Spurs reported. Left gluteus uh, spasms is exactly the uh, the what the Spurs reported. So let's dive into it. Let's start off with, I guess, the more serious one, quote unquote, and that'd be a Devin Vassell and left knee soreness. You would think soreness is, yeah, you know, put a little ice pack, put some Ben Gay on it, and it's gone. But the Spurs were, I guess, forth thinking to sit him out against the Minnesota game. Uh, tell us about left knee soreness. Why do you think the Spurs sat him out? Well, I don't have any, you know, firsthand knowledge of, of exactly um, mm-hmm. what's going on there. I'm sure that he had an MRI that, you know, looking for structural damage and didn't find that. If I had to, um, conject, you know, have conjecture on, on right, what's right, going right. on, the most, the most common um, knee soreness that you encounter with players like this is patellar tendonitis. They call that jumper's mm-hmm. knee. Or when you're a kid, they used to call it Osgood Schlaughter. Uh, mm-hmm. where that patellar tendon just gets inflamed from the repetitive jumping and landing. Uh, and it, it's tough. Vince Carter used to get it regularly and would have to sit, mm-hmm. you know, several games. Uh, it's just, you know, it's it's a repetitive use injury. It's miserable. It's not, you know, dangerous. It doesn't put, put you mm-hmm. at any more, you know, risk for things like ACL, PCL, the, the really bad injuries that we worry about with basketball players. But it is miserable, and the only cure for it is rest. 
So wow. that, that's usually how it goes. You have to rest a few, ice, elevate, mm -hmm. get back to it. Uh, but, you know, intermittently you may just have to have to rest for a couple of games because jumper's knee or patellar tendonitis is uh, it's painful and uh, it's just mm -hmm. something that all basketball players are going to face. As of this recording, the Spurs have not sent out their updated injury report for tonight's game versus Chicago, but they did recall Blake Wesley and Malachi Branner from the Austin G League team. That's a sign that maybe, just maybe, Vassell may not play. You know, all hands on deck to fill the void. But again, the Spurs taking that, you know, advanced caution in this situation. You know, you you would think, Doctor, that his youth, you know, he's still in his early 20s, that that, that, that would be a factor in the healing process. But it sounds basically what you're saying, like this takes time. And I'm going to assume... Spurs fans should not be surprised later down the road if it flares up again and he's reported on the RR report again. That's right. If you're if you are prone to patellar tendonitis, you know it's going to flare up probably a couple of times a season. And it's not you know youth is wonderful and on your side and he'll be he'll be back at it, no problem. You know in in a week or two at the very mm -hmm. longest. But this even happens a lot when you see like 13, 14, 15 year olds start doing their first basketball camps, their first AAU, where they're mm -hmm. going at it day after day after day, that that patellar tendon just from the repetitive jumping and landing gets really inflamed. And like I said, if you remember mm -hmm. Vince Carter, his was classic because we remember him for his ability to jump, but he would have to take mm -hmm. a few games off almost every year because that patellar tendonitis would flare up. And it just, it is what yeah. it is. It's not, not dangerous structurally long-term, but painful and has to be managed with rest. Oh, you look at the last three games. Right, right, right. Well, just real quick, um, I want to get your thoughts on this. Uh, the last three games prior to Vassell sitting out, he played uh, over 30 minutes, 34 against Philadelphia, 34 against Indiana, 33 against Minnesota before they sat him out. That's some heavy usage right there, Doctor. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's you know, a usage rate, a different kind of usage rate, you know, just the pure yeah. of being on the floor um, that a lot of these players aren't used to uh, going through the college, the demands of college basketball, high school basketball were a lot less than they are at this level. Uh, and having to use your explosiveness against a whole different level of competition, uh, getting used to that, you know, can put more strain on the, the knees and the patellar tendon. And then I think we're seeing that with, with Devin. This is a lot, lot more than what he saw at Florida State for sure. Absolutely. Once again, we're here with Dr. Ryan McCorkle. Make sure to follow him on Twitter at Austin E R Doc. He is making his weekly visit right here on Locked On Spurs to uh, talk about the Spurs uh, injury and educate you on what goes on with these injuries and more. Uh, let's talk about Josh Primo now. Uh, he's literally that phrase. He got butt hurt. Like literally, he he's butt hurt. <laughs> he has left gluteus spasms. Again, no idea if he's going to play uh, tonight versus Chicago, but nevertheless. Let's talk about that. Such a random thing. I, I thought I would never see that on an injury report, but here we are. Uh, what is it? What is this that Primo suffered? But it made me think of the the Ted Lasso episode where you, you tore your butt, son. Nothing, nothing to be ashamed of. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Coach Beard tore his butt three times, but uh, it's it was he fell, so it was a direct yeah. blow. So he was icing it, you know, and then they thought he was going to be okay after that you know, and not miss any time, but start having those spasms. Uh, and it can be just mm -hmm. from the direct contusion, you know, falling from that kind of height directly onto it. You know, you have some muscle damage, a hematoma, um, mm -hmm. contusion to the tissue that could lead to some muscle spasm. You could also, you know, could be the low back muscles um, seizing up, getting some low back spasms, causing some sciatica with the sciatic nerve running down through that gluteus maximus muscle and then down into the thigh. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's the classic sciatica. We hope that it's more of just that direct contusion because sciatica would be you might have right. some kind of small disc herniation, you know, and you definitely don't want to see that because that can lead to, to longer term problems. But we're, we're calling it gluteus spasm. So I'm thinking it's more just the direct mm -hmm. trauma contusion, the localized tissue and not more of a herniated disc sciatica mm -hmm. situation coming out of the spine, yeah. just where the sciatic nerve runs yeah. through that gluteus, gluteus maximus muscle. Mm -hmm. Popovich did address it again, saying that he's unsure if, Pop if Primo will play. And he he said exactly what Ted Lasso said, you know, on that line. You know, he fell on his butt. <laughs> he said the same thing, too. <laughs> uh, you know, what 
weird what kind of treatment is this is just simply just you know not playing and rest uh, i mean I, I guess there's that that's about it huh yeah i feel, I feel badly that everybody's just going to hear the same mostly the same treatment options for most injuries but <laughs> that ricin therapy is just classic for sports related injuries ricin being rest yeah. ice compression elevation and non-steroidal anti-inflammatories and that's exactly what they're mm-hmm. doing with josh is that direct ice mm-hmm. you know having him rest it and then you know, probably some compression and definitely mm-hmm. some, some insets. Right. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm expect, I'm, I'm uh, anticipating that they should be back sooner than later. Again, you know, this recorded before the bulls game, but even if they don't play against the bulls, they should be back soon. Right. Based on this injury and your conjecture. Yeah. All the, uh, all the information that we've seen so far is, yeah, there was just a direct contusion He's, mm-hmm. like you said literally butthurt and it's just going to be some ice and I think predominant you know a, an overabundance of caution let's hold him out of game uh, mm-hmm. because I haven't seen anything that says this involves the low back or spine or sciatica other than right. just that localized inflammation on that sciatic nerve through the through the gluteus but uh, so I think there you have probably it. a game, yep. game or two and he'll be back Absolutely. All right. Well, that's good news. You know, hopefully nothing major. It's good. Just as uh, the doctor said, rice, given that rice treatment and they'll be fine. But it is funny before uh, Dr. Ryan and I got together to record his uh, weekly uh, visit at that time, there was no injuries. And I'm telling Dr. Ryan, Hey, you know, I don't know what you want to talk about. You know, there's nothing on, on the slate as far as the IR report. And then you brought up a good topic and let's dive into it. And that is former spur Kawhi Leonard. Um, a very good time to bring this up because he is back in the headlines again for that injury, that same injury, the same is- issue that he had in San Antonio. It's popping up again with the Clippers. Uh, your thoughts on his situation? He seems to, you know, historically in his career, never play a full 82 game slate or, at, or even 70 games. Uh, what do you think is going on with the former Spur? I think there's a lot of trepidation around that knee, you know, for good reason. It's caused a lot Mm -hmm. of problems, you know, causing them to miss a ton of time. So they're just very cautious, especially this early in the season. You know, I mean, I think that's become the MO a lot for his career is to take it super easy for the majority of the regular season and then just try to get in enough work towards the end of the season to be limber and ready to go for the playoffs. So I think it's just an overabundance of caution. I think people may, you know, I don't, again, we have to say this every time. I don't have any firsthand knowledge of what's going on structurally. Right. Absolutely. Inside his knee. Yep. However, it's, um, you know, th- there being a lot read into his statements that there was maybe some, you know, passive aggressive little dig at the Spurs medical staff, you know, saying that it, mm-hmm. he feels a lot better taken care of in, in LA. And it's just a, it's, it's a hard position to be in. I think that's, even more than what's exactly going on with Kawhi's knee other than, you know, just, you know, he needs, he can only handle so many games. And so it's, it's really trying to manage that workload so that it's, it's backloaded so that he's ready to go for the playoffs and not worrying about the early regular season. Uh, I think the topic I really wanted to address with it is how hard it is to be the medical staff for an NBA team because you are, you're, you're constantly in the middle of wanting the best for your patient, the player, and that is your job, that is your oath, that is what you're there to do. You are employed by a, an organization who has the agenda of wanting to put the best product on the floor and getting that mm-hmm. asset that they have paid for onto the floor as quickly as possible. Most of the time, those things coexist very well. You both want the same things. We want them at their best and their healthiest and on the floor. Um, on the rare occasion, this didn't obviously never happen in San Antonio at all. Their medical staff is mm-hmm. just absolutely above reproach. The class of the league, everybody says so. The way they take mm-hmm. care of the, the players, they have no, no qualms about that. But a lot of times players want to have somebody that they know has their best interest in mind and they don't feel right. that there might be another agenda. So then they want to get independent, you know, a second opinion. And as a doctor, you should never be offended by a second opinion, right? If a patient wants a second opinion, you mm-hmm. should say, go do it. And if, if you have a doctor who's telling you, don't go seek, seek another opinion, then you got to think about what their agenda is. So right. 
it becomes, I mean, I face this in my, you know, my backstage medical business, you know, the, the, the venue is the one who usually calls me to see a patient that mm-hmm. I want the artist to get better and to be able to perform. The artist wants to get better and be able to perform, but you, right. you always have that in the back of your mind that if, if the artist can't perform and you have to tell them that the best, their best course of action is to cancel the show, you've just cost the venue hundreds of thousands of dollars just for that one night. Right. So then it becomes, Hey, what can you do to just get them out there for this one night? You know, cause then it's the next venues problem or whatever. And then, then you can get motivations being at odds. And that's, that's what mm-hmm. I think players are concerned about in the NBA is, is this, I, I'm sure people have seen any given Sunday. That was kind of the scenario there that the, the doctor was yeah. holding to the team and not looking out for the best mm-hmm. interest of the player getting them, you know, just enough yeah. medication to get them out on the field, mm-hmm. even though knowing it was going to impact their long-term health. So I think that's, that's where the, it becomes difficult is trying to prove to the player that you're there for them. You're there for their best interests. You want to see them healthy. You want to see them have their longest career possible, not just getting you back on the floor in the least amount of time possible, because that's what the right. team wants. So, yeah, yeah it, it's, a, it's a tight rope to walk. It, it, yeah, exactly. And and the Spurs went through that. I mean that 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 season, that final season with the Kawhi, that was a doozy. You know, you know that was, woo. I mean, so with the second opinions and 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 then the re, the rumors and reports that, you know, of the condition, the state, the state of his knee is it simply him just using that as a crush to get out of San Antonio. It was wild, but you you saw that injury just repeat itself. Or pop up again when he was in Toronto. You know, same thing. You know, they managed his knee or his thigh, and then you now the the Clippers are they're going through that too. But what what did you think about that whole Spurs uh, Kawhi final season back and forth? As a doctor, I'm pretty sure you felt for the Spurs uh, medical staff being kind of stuck in the middle. Absolutely, and you know, having gone to medical school there in San Antonio and gotten to do some rotations with them, of course, I would never say that I'm not. I have a completely unbiased yeah. opinion. I, I have a lot of respect for that for that medical staff, for their orthopedists, and so I mean, I, I wouldn't say that I'm unbiased there. I think that probably mm-hmm. the biggest critique you would have is that there was a breakdown in communication, a lack of communication, mm-hmm. because while you say definitely go seek a second opinion, but then those those docs should talk hey, this is what I did. This is what I found. Tell me what you did and what mm-hmm. you find. What do you think? And let's have a collegial meeting of the minds and figure out what is best for this patient that we have both seen to try to give him the longest career possible. Right. You know, because you, you're an independent evaluation. Obviously, I am, I am employed by the team, but I still care about these players individually and personally, and I want to see them have the longest career possible, not just what's best for my team this year. Um, mm-hmm. so, but let's talk about it. And I just don't think there was any communication between all the people that were evaluating, examining, and giving a treatment plan. And so then, yeah. then it became you know a real breakdown of, well, these people are telling me one thing, these people are telling me something else. Mm-hmm. I I don't think they have my best interest in mind. And and when right. you do get you know independent evaluations in other places, then I mean there's other motivations that come in there. Of course. I want to tell you what you want to hear. I want you to, you know, I want to be the one that you trust here. So are, are they sowing seeds of doubt about how the team was taking care of him? Again, it could have all just probably been improved with some communication between everybody that was yeah, evaluating and taking care of Kawhi. And that it just, yeah, it. yeah, it, That's, yeah. 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 It was a mess. That was a mess. And, uh, but, uh, he's moved on, uh, but yeah, it's, it's definitely interesting to bring up because you know, just you know, his his situation again is popping up already early in the season. This was his return back from taking a year off, and here we go again. So Spurs fans definitely remember those days. By the way, our uh, your I guess our co guest on this episode of Lockdown Spurs, he just came on before you do. You did. He had asked me to ask you, and obviously he's joking, he's just playing with you. But he goes. <laughs> Ask doctor if Primo's butt injury is just Popovich low key tanking this team. <laughs> so he's, he's got, <laughs> so there's a question from the previous guest. Obviously, you don't have to answer that, but uh, he was just having fun with you, doctor. 
Right, you saw that a lot on Twitter. But as soon as uh, yeah, know, the, the Spurs won those those first couple of games, and then all all of a sudden, oh, Devin and Josh are both out now. Was a, that was yeah. the immediate comedic uh, response. Was of course this is yeah this is how we get the tank machine up and running yeah. for 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 Victor yeah. for next year. But. Exactly. By the way, if uh, you know if you could take off your uh, medical baseball cap and just put your Spurs fan cap on, what do you think? You, are you team tank or team compete? Um, I mean, I think I, I, I mean, do, do I want Victor on this team? Absolutely. I mean, who doesn't? <laughs> yes, everybody does. Yeah, talent. So, so yeah. I mean, that, that, that's. But I don't think that this is the type of organization, and of course, Pop's not the kind of coach that could ever yeah. tolerate an intentional lack of effort, an intentional, you know, exactly tanking. So I don't, I don't think we're going to see that. And and just, we have such a good culture and we have such a good group of young players that when you have a long grind of a season, they're going to catch people on nights where they don't think they're going to have to bring their a game. And we're going to end up with more mm-hmm. wins than we thought we were going to, we we're going to get, but that is, I mean, again, this is a lottery, right? There's no relegation. Yep. <laughs> nope. We uh, it doesn't yeah. doesn't mean you have to have the worst record in the league in order to yeah. get Victor. It just gives you a, a exactly. slightly better chance. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I you know it's, it's, it's to the point now. The NBA announced that they're going to start broadcasting Victor's game, and he has nothing to do with the NBA yet. Nothing to do. Different league, different continent. They're going to start broadcasting his game. That's how big of a prize he is uh, seen uh, for all these teams. But yes, uh, Spurs uh, starting early in the season, three and two, heading into tonight's game versus Chicago. Once again, the doctor makes his visit here at Lockdown Spurs. Once again, Dr. Ryan, we appreciate you taking time, helping Spurs fans learn, understand better what these injuries the Spurs go through uh, throughout the entire season. Uh, do you want to tell us everything that's going on with you at back, backstage medical and concierge medicine practice? We just talked last week about finishing up the uh, ACL festival. That was uh, big. And now in Austin, we're heading into some heavy concert season. So covering all the venues here and uh, seeing more of that. And then just did the Austin FC playoff game last week. Uh, worked mm-hmm. there at the, uh, the St. David's Medical Facility. And that was a big win for Austin FC. Hopefully, if we win this weekend in L.A., then we'll have the championship here in Austin which will be a big thing for uh, for us locally. And, and mm-hmm. I'll, I'll be looking forward to being able to work there and uh, and provide medical care for the crowd. And then I'll be back at UT football uh, for the TCU game and the Baylor game. Uh, mm-hmm. And so we've got a lot going on with, uh, with the backstage medical and with the, uh, with, uh, the UT football and Austin FC mm-hmm. soccer. So a lot going on, but it's a really fun and, and good time to be practicing medicine here in Austin. Absolutely. Make sure to follow him on Twitter at Austin E R Doc. Do it right now. He'll chat you up about the Spurs and their injuries as well. You can always catch him here at least once a week on Locked On Spurs. Uh, Doctor, again, we appreciate you hopping on this episode. And uh, for everybody else, we're making Locked On Spurs your first listen each and every day. Make your second listen, Locked On Sports Today podcast, the biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get podcasts. See you for Locked On Spurs, Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get podcasts. So for our fan guest, Zach Escamilla, Dr. Ryan McCorkle. I am Jeff Garcia. We're going to put a lock on this episode of Lockdown Spurs.